Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Jason, and I get questions all the time asking me where I go to get my Overland supplies. People say it must be nice to live in Colorado because you have all of those stores to pick up camping and off-roading supplies. Most of my stuff actually comes from big box retail locations. So if you have this store in your town, you can probably pick up some supplies as well. All right guys, so here we are at Costco, the land of bulk items and free samples. I was actually very surprised at how much stuff I was able to find while I was here, and I definitely see some items I have bought before. All right guys, so we're gonna start off with this Cascade Mountain Tech two-person travel hammock. Now I love having these around camp. I have an Eno brand, and I've had mine for almost 13 years now. Back in the day, I actually did use this as my main way of camping. I wouldn't even bring a tent, I would just camp in this hammock. At this point in my life now, it's just not that comfortable for my back. I mean, I'm not that old, but still, um, you know, sleeping in this position isn't my favorite way to camp, but it's still something that I love setting up and relaxing around the campfire. I'm a big, big hammock fan. So they always do end up calling these two-person hammocks, but it's really a one-person hammock. If they ever call it a one-person hammock, then it's just a little bit tighter of a fit. You could probably put two people in here, but realistically, you should probably each get your own. For only 30 bucks, it's actually a really great deal. All right, so next we're gonna be looking at this 10-person lighted instant cabin tent. This one is absolutely massive, so if you have a big family, this will work great for you. There's also this six-person one here that's probably gonna work a little bit better for most people. If you have a large family or something like that, maybe four people, this will be perfect size for you. It's got built-in LED lighting in it, which I actually used to think was sort of corny, but now that I've had it in my tents, I would consider it definitely a necessity. It's 10 foot by nine foot, and they claim that it sleeps six people. I usually take one to two people off of that uh, claim whenever I look at a tent. I know that there's tents out there for like 60 bucks, 70 bucks, something like that. You know, a single person tent, but this one's actually a little bit nicer of a tent. So for a little over hundred bucks, you can fit your whole family in one tent. So this is the core 30 degree sleeping bag. Now it's rated at 30 degrees, but that is the comfort rating as it goes down to extreme temperatures of negative 13. The regular limit is about 19 F, but uh, we're gonna treat the survivability as the negative 13. So this packs down pretty tight. You know, it's not uh, the smallest thing ever. So this is a polyester bag. You know, obviously if you go with a down sleeping bag, you will get a smaller, more compact uh, pack down. You're probably gonna be spending about five or six times the amount of this polyester one here. So it is a hybrid. So you're gonna get a little bit of a base at the bottom to be able to move your feet around, you know, unlike a mummy bag. But like a mummy bag, on the top portion you will get a hood, which is gonna add a little bit of extra warmth. So this next one is nice for just a little bit extra warmth, or maybe even some warmth around the campfire. This is a Pendleton packable blanket. I have an older version of this one, and it's really nice for kind of hanging out around the campfire or just hanging out around camp. You can also stack this on top of your sleeping bag to get a little bit of extra warmth, but I would never rely on this as my main source of warmth while I'm sleeping. So it packs down really small. It's easy to fit in the back of a vehicle or under a seat or something like that. And then you can unpack it as like a little base underneath you for a picnic or something like that. They have a bunch of different colors and Pendleton's a really great company. You know, this is a polyester. It's definitely not their wool line. So, you know, keep that in mind. If you want something a little bit more comfortable, the Alpatrek Outdoor Adventure Blanket is going to be great for just a blanket. You know, I wouldn't use this as a picnic or a base like the other one. So with these thumb holes, you can wrap yourself up a little bit better around the campsite. They also have tons of other sleeping and bedding products, you know, all the way up to uh, cots, stuff like that. They also have this little thing through climate where where basically if you are a Costco member, you get extra discounts on climate gear. Now I've never personally done this through Costco. I know it's something you can do. I've seen it on some other brands before, but could be a really cool way to pick up some really high-end gear for pretty cheap. So here we're looking at the Timber Ridge Outdoor Camping Chair. It packs down to a pretty decent size. I mean, it's not the biggest thing ever, but it's definitely not the smallest packing down chair ever does have a little spot on the side where you can uh, put your cup 
little cup holder for bottles, stuff like that, but certainly would work great. And uh, I sat in it, it was pretty comfortable. This one is a little bit less expensive, a little bit smaller, but it is going to be a little bit more flimsy just because of the nature of how small it packs down. I have one of these around the house that is great for like backpacking. You know, if you just want to spend a little bit of extra money, you can get something more substantial. It's great for backpacking, lightweight, you know, hiking, stuff like that. But certainly if you are tight on space, this could be a great option for you. The next one is going to be Rio Brands. This is a swinging hammock chair. I have one just like this at home. They all kind of model themselves after the Nemo Stargazer, I believe it's called. This one is a little bit cooler because it does kind of extend a little bit higher, but for the most part, all of these are gonna do just about the same thing. And they pack down pretty tight and they have a really heavy weight capacity on them. It's kind of nice because it's kind of like a hammock, kind of like a chair, something in between that, but pretty comfortable. They also have some other chairs on here that I really didn't mention just because, you know, they, they, they really didn't really meet exactly the criteria I was looking for. But uh, you can certainly check out their website and see if you can deliver it to your home store. All right, so next up we've got tables. This one is a roll top table. Now I have a roll top table. I even kind of made this little thing to go on drawers with the roll top table. A lot of you guys have asked me about that. Um, maybe I'll talk a little bit about it in the future here, but this one essentially does the same principle. It kind of just unravels and locks into place. I like these kind of tables because they hardly take up any space when you're packing them away and they pack out really large. So this one claims to have a six person capacity of sitting around it. Um, I'd probably say more like four, but if you have some little kids or something, then maybe six would work for you. These are certainly the best way to go if you're not trying to take up a lot of space. And I like this one because it actually has kind of a nice wooden top to it. I've never loved that silver reflective stuff to it. Mine's black, but uh, the wood looks really cool. Honestly, this was really the only table I saw there that was worth looking at. There's some other ones, but they're kind of like mesh ones. And I just really don't trust the, uh, the mesh for anything other than cups. All right, time to focus on the kitchen. Right, there were a few different brands of coolers out there. You know, you can go with your standard igloo, you know, something like that. Um, they are huge, but if you're going to be doing overlanding and you want something to stay cold for a while, I would actually look at this roto molded cooler. So when you think about like a Yeti or something like that, that is what roto molded means. Basically, they consider this to be grizzly proof. Now, I don't know how they would certify something as being grizzly proof, but definitely with the rubber pieces that you pull up, it is certainly going to be a lot harder for wildlife to get in there. 55 is probably the perfect size for most people, you know, like a family, something like that. If you're going to be on the road for like seven days, maybe actually look at uh, getting yourself like a fridge or something like that. They've also got this little bit smaller one. If you're just a single person, you know, this could work for you as well. It's only 70 bucks. So, uh, you know, that could be nice as well. So when it comes to camp stoves, obviously Coleman is going to be an oldie, but goodie. I've had a few Coleman stoves and I've really liked them, but I've had mostly the pump ones. This one is a 20,000 BTU. I believe that means that there's 10,000 and 10,000 on the burners there. You know, this would be great around camp. It's, it's probably going to fit the needs of most people because you can, you can pack it down pretty small. It doesn't take up a lot of space and you can use different types of propane on that. So the second one is going to be a huge upgrade, but you're, it's obviously going to take up a lot more space. This is the camp chef here. This has three burners on it probably going to be the best bet for you if you're going to be the guy or girl cooking for everybody. The Tundra Pro 16 is an absolute behemoth of a stove. Camp Chef makes really great products. They're consistently at the top of most rankings when you're looking at stoves. Obviously, the price tag is going to match that. This thing is $250. Certainly something you could even utilize at home. Very nice, great brand, and they have a bunch of accessories that go along with it. You can add propane tanks. So they even have an oven out there, uh, 9,000 BTUs. Uh, I've never found myself needing an oven while I'm out camping, but uh, if that's something you need, then Camp Chef has it. So I did find a relatively affordable knife set. I kind of liked this for outdoors because it's only 18 bucks. So, you know, if something breaks or gets lost, it's not a big deal. I do like that it has different colors, which is great for camping. You know, you want bright colors out there. Now, I can't really say one way or the other about these, but it's a whole set of knives for, you know, pretty cheap. So I, I would definitely take a look at it. 
Next up, we have the Mountain House Adventure Meals. Basically what these are is you take these out camping with you, you boil some water, set it in there, and after a few minutes, then you have food. I always keep these with me at least as a backup when I go camping. Sometimes if I'm just being lazy and I'm by myself, I'll just eat one of these instead of cooking an actual meal. But uh, yeah, you've got tons of different stuff on here. Beef stroganoff, lasagna, chicken teriyaki, chili mac. So you can really test it out. You know, 70 bucks for all of these meals. You know, it might sound expensive if you've never had these before, but these end up being like $8 or something like that per pouch if you go somewhere else. So it actually is a really great deal. You'll basically get a full meal in here, got your main meal, and you do have dessert for a couple of them. Biscuits and gravy, so you do have breakfast as well. All right, after that, we've got a water bottle here, two of them, a two pack, it's pretty nice. The Thermo Flask is, you know, just a brand out there, but I would definitely recommend you pick up one of these. I really like Hydro Flask and also Stanley. Those are kind of my favorite ones, but certainly you should be bringing water out there for everybody and, and enough to last you for however long you're gonna be out there. So just as a backup, we also do have this life straw here. Now I can drop a video below of kind of like showing how this works, but you can use these to filter out pretty much any water. There's videos of people out there filtering really disgusting water, but it's probably likely that you can find something that's at least flowing. They can guarantee you to kill 99.999% of parasites, as well as bacteria, you know, giardia, stuff like that. Uh, definitely helpful in an emergency. I've never personally used one of these, but I do like having them as a backup. All right, so one of the biggest things that I always recommend for people is to bring some sort of electrolyte. This will kind of multiply the way that you absorb the water while you're out camping. If you're out in the sun or out there kind of doing activities, even if you're just kind of hanging out at camp, you're probably going to be needing a lot of water, especially if you're out there drinking tons of beers at night and then waking up in the morning. I always recommend getting some sort of electrolyte. This just so happens to be my favorite one. Obviously, they do have tons of food out there. So if you're going to be, you know, camping, then go ahead and pick you up some food before you go. All right, up next is fire pits, and we're gonna start off with this Yellowstone branded fire pit here. Obviously it's not put together as it should be, but uh, I know that that will be fine. I had one like this before, and it was a little bit messy. Not quite my favorite way, but uh, if you're somebody that really loves the Yellowstone show, I know they are raking in some money. Every time I go to any store, I see something branded by them. But yeah, it'll work perfectly fine for you. It's just a little bit more bulky than what I'm used to. I kind of like the ammo can style personally, but, but this is what Costco had. So if you're going to Costco, go ahead and pick you up one of these. It is 5,800 BTU. So this thing is probably going to put out a ton, a ton of fire. It's also the Solo Stove Mesa 3-pack. I thought this was really cool and I might even end up getting this as a gift for people this Christmas, but it's basically just like a little fire pit on your tabletop. Solo stove is basically going to be a smokeless fire pit. So it sucks in air through the bottom, heats it, and then when the fire comes out of the top, it is going to burn that smoke in a second cycle. So you won't have any smoke, or if you do, it'll be super, super minimal. They also do have a large one of these, but I couldn't find it while I was here. So you can just check that out online. But these are really cool. I like these a lot. 150 bucks is not cheap, but it certainly is really, really cool. So obviously, if you're gonna be having any kind of fire at your campsite, please, please always bring a fire extinguisher. You never know how stuff can get out of hand. All right, next up, we've got electronics, and we're gonna go ahead and start off with this flashlight here. For only 20 bucks, this gets you 550 lumens. So because this is from Duracell, it is obviously gonna be battery powered. I would technically prefer to have a rechargeable kind of built-in battery there, but for only 20 bucks, that's actually a pretty good deal because you get the flashlight and you get the batteries with it. Really the only downside there is that you just have to buy more batteries as it dies. There's three different modes, kind of a flashing and all that. You can do 550, 100 lumens for a few more hours of use, but yeah, could be a pretty good buy for only 20 bucks. Another Duracell, this is a 575 lumen headlamp. 570 lumens is pretty good, but again, it is going to be battery powered. So just remember that when you're purchasing it. Like I said, I do like rechargeable stuff a little bit better, but you know, I'll take what I can get. Three different modes and it does have the red night vision, which is something I really, really like. It actually helps with mosquitoes, stuff like that. It doesn't put out as much light. So if you're looking at somebody in the eyes, you're not blinding them with that red light. 
But like I said, again, only real downside for me is that it is battery power. Another Duracell one, this is crazy big. It is 1500 lumens. So this is obviously like a tabletop lamp or like a lantern, but 1500 lumens is a ton of power. So it also does have a built-in rechargeable battery on this one and it uses standard D batteries. I had a Coleman lantern that was battery powered and I really liked that one a lot until it was time to buy some new batteries and those D batteries are not cheap. It does have a USB for in-power charging so you can power some devices with you, but it would be really nice to have like kind of on a tabletop or something like that. So if you really want like a nice all around light for your camp, you can set one of these up. I have a Devos Light Ranger. I definitely would recommend that, but on a little bit of a budget, this should work just fine. Now, I've never personally had this light, but I actually use their products for home lighting and I've really liked it a lot. So I really do trust the quality on that. 2000 lumens is a lot of light to spread out through camp. And since you can change up the directions on this, I would say it's definitely a good buy. Next, we have another light here from the same company. I don't really know how to pronounce it. I've always pronounced it Fiat. This is another battery powered one, but rechargeable or USB flashlight. You can also recharge this one and you can recharge like your phone, stuff like that while you're out there. Not much to say about this one. You know, 3000 lumens, 1500 and 700 lumens. You know, 12 hours with that 700 lumens, that's really, really great. High beam range is 165 meters, so you get a lot of throw with this light here. Now also I do recommend getting some sort of way to jump yourself out there. This one is 1200 peak amp, so it's a pretty good size. It's also got a compressor on it. Now I would definitely not make this my main compressor or anything like that. And I also wouldn't make it my main power bank, but it would work great as a jump starter as well as uh, you know additional things. We also do have this uh, $1,400 power bank here. Now this I could see being a good all around power bank. It's got tons of different inputs here, does also come with a solar panel and with 400 watts of solar recharging, it can charge in four hours. It's got good power to it, uh, you know, 100 hours on an LED light bulb, it, that's pretty good. Now I have a lot of power banks. I definitely like bringing these with me, especially with a solar panel. It just makes it so much better that way. I've never used anything from Energizer that's this big or anything like that, but it could be a good buy. So $1,400 for a 990 watt power source is an okay deal. I realistically buy EcoFlow stuff for the most part, and sometimes I'll get about a dollar per watt here. This is a little bit over that $1 per watt hour. So most power banks are pretty similar. So if you're at Costco and you wanna pick one of these up, I'd say go for it. Now, more realistically, what I would actually get as a jump starter, I would get something like this. I have one very similar to this from Goal Zero, and I really like it. A little bit more compact, so if you're out and uh, you know running a lot of electricity off your battery and your battery dies, this is probably something I would grab for uh, more often than something a little bit bigger. It's almost exactly like my current one, pretty much identical there, and it'll fit really nicely in a drawer system or, or underneath a chair in a glove box, something like that. So definitely a good buy if you do use a lot of electricity out there and you're worried about your battery dying. I have had that happen to me before, especially in the cold, and it was brutal reminder that I need to bring one of these with me all the time. All right, so this Coho Pack and Carry, this is the same company that had the cooler earlier, but I like to bring boxes like this for storage. It's even got a little bag on the top here. Now I use a Roam box. It's a little bit bigger than this, um, you know, certainly a little bit more money as well but it's really nice to stay organized while you're out camping. So if you don't have a drawer system or anything like that, you know, only 50 bucks just to be able to organize your stuff and kind of keep it together is really, really nice. I definitely recommend getting yourself a good storage bin. I would also definitely recommend getting yourself some insect repellent. I've been in some situations before where I pretty much just didn't leave my tent because there were so many insects around. So ever since then, I really do not camp without insect repellent. I especially like this because it's a little bit more natural. The lemon eucalyptus is, you know, a good smell rather than those chemically smelling ones. I would also recommend getting yourself a pair of work gloves. Now I have some leather ones like this, but I really do like the Wells Lamont brand. There's tons of different uses for this. You know, if you're chopping wood or something like that, please always be wearing gloves. You know, there's so many ways you can really hurt yourself out there. So 
So since I cook over an open fire most of the time, I always bring these because then I can grab the cast iron and pull it out of the fire. But there are so many different uses you can use for this. So also this bear spray here, I have this exact two pack and I leave this in the back of my vehicle, one of them in the back of the vehicle and one of them up front. So I camp out in bear country and I grew up in the Appalachian mountains where there are tons of bears out there as well and I just do not risk it. Now there's something else I would recommend you getting, maybe a 10 millimeter, but I don't want to talk too much about that for fear of demonetization. But if you bring something like this bear spray out there, it is just one extra added bit of safety while you're out camping. Now also if you need ratchet tie downs, you got a lot of bulky stuff to keep in the back of your truck or in the back of your you know, vehicle and go ahead and get yourself some ratchet tie downs. I've never really needed these for my camping gear. I've really only needed this for hauling stuff, but I know a lot of people out there do bring a lot of big bulky items, especially in the back of a truck. You can just kind of ratchet stuff down and make sure it doesn't slide around and break all your stuff. Mm -hmm. 